Hmm. So I guess we're gonna make this a regular thing. All right, let's make something. What is going on, YouTube? In today's episode of Let's Make, I guess we're gonna go ahead and make this a regular thing. So we're gonna go ahead and design a keychain uh, in Fusion 360, just something real simple. Similar to this guy right here, just has a flat base with a logo on it. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right into Fusion 360 and I'll show you guys what we're gonna make. All right, so here we are in Fusion 360. And what we've got here is a Nintendo Switch logo. Something very simple that we can work with. Uh, you can see I've already designed a very large one. This one's actually a 60 millimeter cube. Uh, the edges here have a fillet on them. And we're going to try and recreate this over here a little bit smaller. Just so I can show you some of these concepts right here. We're using a midpoint, a three-way arc up top. So let's go ahead and just try and make a 40 millimeter one. So we're going to start with a 40 millimeter square. I'll type 40 millimeters and then tab over to the other one and hit enter. And then to add the fillet to each of these corners, all we're going to do is go to sketch, hit fillet. And what you can do is hold down control and click each one of these corners. And it will add that round edge. Now we're going to try and mimic the larger one. So let's see what it looks like with an 11 millimeter. I think that one looks better. So let's go and take that. Next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and run this line right down the center. To do that, we can just create a line by clicking this icon right here. And you notice if we hover over the top, when we get close to the center, we get a triangle. That shows that we're at the midpoint of that line. We can click, drag down to the bottom, to show another triangle showing that we're at the middle point of the bottom, along with an X showing that we're on the line, and we just click to apply the line there. Now, to do the three-way arc at the top, we're going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit, make it a little easier. We'll go sketch, arc, and do a three-point arc. These are really simple. All you do is go click your outer one, click the opposite side that you want to place it, and then you're just going to bring it up in the center to give it kind of a loop, just like that. And now we don't want this to be a solid loop, so we're going to add another one. And we don't have to be super precise here because I'll show you what we're going to need to make this even. Oh, that looks thick enough right there. So we can go ahead and hit escape to exit our line tool. Now what we can do is go to the concentric constraint, which will center this arc in, inside of the larger arc. So I'll click the smaller arc, click the larger arc, and then they are now centered. So we have a nice even loop there. And this would be what we place our chain through for the keychain. So let's go ahead and zoom back out. Now what we can do is we can add this smaller rectangle here. It's going to go on this side here. Let's go ahead and create a rectangle like so and we can always edit the dimensions after we place it so let's go ahead and place it like that and what we're going to do is we're going to add a fillet to these corners as well go ahead and try nine go ahead and add it to one down here as well try nine and adjust this however we need to Bring it down. And we're not going to make this perfect. We'll just make it look just like that. So now we have the left Joy-Con of the logo, and the right Joy-Con of the logo. And we just need to add the joysticks as well. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and go create a center diameter circle. Now in the actual logo, this right circle is a bit it's not quite as low as this one is high, so they're not exactly mirrored. This one is a bit higher. Well, let's go 7.5. And we're just going to do the same thing over here. 
And the circle on this one, the midpoint, starts right about where this fillet starts on that side. We're just going to bring it here. We're going to bring this over just a little bit because we have one other line that we need to add in the center here. We're going to come right here. Go ahead and click. Drag it down so it meets this line. Shows that they are perpendicular with that little blue square. Click. Hit escape. Now we can actually modify it a little bit, just like that. Move this to the center. Keeping it a little higher. Like I said, these aren't exactly mirrored. So just like that. So we've got both of our sketches. Now let's go ahead and end the sketch from here by showing the body. So you can see there, we're extruding at different heights. Give us a little bit of dimension to the keychain. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this right here and we're gonna extrude by pressing E, typing how far we want to extrude. So we're just gonna say two millimeters. Hit enter. Show our sketch again. Now we know this spot right here and this circle here are also going to be two millimeters. So we're going to click those and we can control click to select them both at the same time. So we'll select them both, hit E to extrude and type two. And now we've got our two lower or sorry, three lower areas. We're going to add one more to that and that's going to be this arc. We'll add the arc and we'll extrude that by two millimeters as well. And then the last thing we're going to do is extrude these three sections a little bit higher. So we're going to go three millimeters. We'll select that part of the sketch, that one there, and lastly, that one there. So select those three, three to extrude once again, or sorry, E, and we will extrude it three millimeters, just like that. What we can do is we can rotate around. And the last thing we want to do is we're going to add a bit of a fillet this ring up here just to make it look a little nicer so we'll zoom into that we can go modify and click on fillet or you can use the hotkey f we'll select that line line by holding control we, we can select multiple lines just by holding control like that and let's see what it looks like with one. It's gonna to be too much with one, so let's try 0.5. That makes it look quite round. Let's see if we can go 0.7. Too much. All right, so 0.6. Actually, I'm gonna go down to 0.5. For one reason, is this flat spot right here at the bottom. I'd like it to have a little bit of surface area when it goes to print it on the bed. All right, so we will hit 0.5. And now we can hit home. And we can see we have our two Switch logo keychains. And just like that, we've created a keychain. Like I said, you can take this a bit further. Um, you can import an SVG file if you have one, create a base, put lay that SVG over the top of the base, and you can extrude the SVG through the keychain to either cut through it or have it embossed on the keychain itself. And that's how something like this right here was created was this horde symbol was just an SVG and it was just extruded on top of this smaller base. So let's go ahead and export this as an STL. We're just going to extrude or sorry, export body five, which is our smaller one because this large 60 millimeters, a little too big for a keychain. So we're going to go ahead and right click on body five and save it as an STL. We'll leave that on binary, leave that on high. Normally this is checked. You can uncheck it because we're gonna we're gonna put it into our slicer. We'll hit okay. We'll go to created. Create a new folder. We like to keep everything nice and organized. We'll just create a folder called keychains. Go ahead and name it switch and hit save. 
All right, so now let's go ahead and hop into uh, the slicer for my MK2, because we're gonna take this a bit further, but I'll show you once we get into the slicing software. All right, so here we are in Slick 3R or Slicer. This is the Prosa edition, as I'm using it for my MK2. So what we're gonna do is add the model that we just created. We'll go to 3D printing. I believe it's in the created folder, keychains and switch. We'll double click that file and wait for it to place it on the bed. Okay, now that we have it on the bed, we just need to rotate it. It looks like we modeled it. We modeled it standing up. Now to rotate, we can just right click on it. We're gonna rotate it around the X axis and we're gonna rotate it a negative 90 degrees and that should lay it flat just like that. See, we've got our keychain there. Looks good. Now what we can do is preview those layers like i said we're going to take this just a bit further we'll go ahead and hit slice now and after we hit slice now we can see our different layers that we're going to print like i said we're going to take this a bit further than just printing it with one color so what what i can do is come up here and right here where this where these yellow lines start in the middle this is the height where we're gonna to want to add the second color. So we need to take note of that. That is at 2.2 is where we want to initiate the color change. So we'll just keep that in mind as we export the file. We're exporting this using the uh, 0.2 normal settings in uh, Prusa's uh, slicer, along with their color print. The reason we want to choose color print when we do this is if we choose their Z hop option, um, the nozzle, moves up and down and it will actually mess up when we want to change the filament out. So we'll choose the color print option. And then we'll just go ahead and export the G code. We're gonna export it to the same spot where we have the STL saved and we'll just save it as switch. We'll save the other one as colored. So we'll just do switch, hit save. All right, and now we'll open up the color print software from Prusa and I'll show you how we add those commands in there as well. All right, so here we are at Prusa's color print web page. And we can just use this to, it basically inserts a command into the G code once the Z height reaches a certain point and it initiates a filament swap on the MK2. Um, I believe it works on their MK1 as well. But as you can see here, if you're using an MK2, you'll wanna make sure that you have the Z hop or Z lift turned off. What we'll do is we'll choose choose file and we'll just choose the G code, which I'm assuming since I named these the same, it's going to be the one with the later modified date. So we'll choose that and hit open. And we can see switch.g code loaded, recognized as slicer three code. Click add color change. And if you remember, we want to add this at 2.2 millimeters. So we'll move the slider up to 2.2 millimeters. Click download G code. And after we click download G code, we can go ahead and throw this on the printer. So I'll go ahead and add this to the printer. You guys see a time lapse here in a few minutes. And when we come back, I'll show you the finished model. So I hope you guys enjoyed that time lapse. And here is the final product. There. Let me pull up the actual logo. And we'll just compare the two. Look pretty good. And the process of printing multiple colors on the MK2, even without their multi-material kit, is super easy. All you do is you put in the layer change when you want to change color. When you create the G-code, and then when you're actually printing, the print head will move to the bottom right hand corner of the printer, eject the filament, you'll go ahead and put in the new filament, it'll purge the nozzle, and then it just starts printing again. So there is our keychain. You can add a little chain to it with a key ring on it if you wanted to add this to your keys. You remove this real quick. And that's it. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop me a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you guys next time.